Well, sometimes the hardest thing about this uh, developing of new stuff, stuff, is to bite the bullet know when to fold them. We are folding this bad boy, so if you don't want to waste 20 minutes of your life learning about the failure, you might want to move on. But if you don't want to move on immediately, I'm not going to, I bought a, 10 boxes of these cases. I'm going to do something with them. I'm going to make something with them. I'm going to radically change direction here. I might do what I was scoffing at earlier. I might end up building a 277 SIG. I had this barrel in for a uh, a high mountain 277 Hellbringer that I was building only because I have the Reamer, because that's a story I'm starting with somebody else. And uh, I custom ordered them, I waited a long time. These are, this is an eight inch twist 277, happens to be a Lilja. I'm not partial to one brand over another, but uh, out here close, Bilja, Lilja and Pacnor. Um, so I had this guy in, and as I've said, until, oh, I don't know, an hour ago, I had no interest in building a 277 SIG. But I have failed, folks, I have failed. My plan is not, in my opinion, worth pursuing anymore the way I'm doing it. So let me show you what I did. When I left off on the last video, I was telling you is how this was a range of shots running from 40 grains up to 46 grains. And it was kind of climbing. I didn't pay. I didn't write everything down. Life is short. Um, this is a different brand of bullet. Other than that, they just kind of trended from bottom to top. I found out after this test that my scope was loose. So just as I was feeling good about going from 40 to 46 grains, you'd expect this to show some more variation up. Whatever. There is, uh, there are loads in there from down around 3,000 feet per second all the way up to 3,600. And they all clumped right here. So I, I, I didn't see any warning signs at this point. I had cut it out and I showed it to you as I just taped it back on. Uh, I've had a hole in my target down there with, anyway. Um, so I decided, I did all of this with one case. All I did was take one case, no sizing, no nothing, just started going boop, 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 up out of the picture. And I was happy with it. I hit 3,600 flat. The last three rounds were clustered pretty close here. I don't remember. I think two of these are the same load, actually, but it doesn't matter. I think there was two 3,600s. I decided, reading primers and stuff, that that's where to stop. Immaterial. Don't care. Wasn't unhappy back when I filmed this. Now it's another day and I'm shooting for effect. I fire formed six cases. And I was thoroughly unimpressed. All six of these were fire formed from Virgin. All I had done at this point was used one case to do this. I grabbed six cases and I did this, and that's a horrible failure. I was starting to doubt my old gun, cleaned it good, making sure that that all... I mean, there's no reason that that gun should really shoot. It's got a bunch of problems. It's got a bald shank. It's only got four, four threads on it, part of a fifth. Um, it's got a six thousandths thick stainless steel shim. To bring it to correct time so that it looks okay and to set the headspace because that has been on so many guns that 
I just had two guns with the same threads per inch. I don't even need to tell you the history of that bad boy. It's just, it's been all over the place. So anyway, suffice it to say that I screwed it into this action. All I'm doing at this point is testing for quick efficacy. Barrel's got 1,500 rounds on it. Blah, blah, blah. But anyway, fire formed the cases. Sized and deprimed. Went down here. Again, all of these are just at certain. This is the first group at 3,600. Bitter disappointment. Horrifying. Like, that should have shot, based on, well, when I saw this, that's when I started getting the trembling in my gut. I went to number two. Again, this is just 3600 size, pop the primer. Using, I'm using a barrel, no, I just set the thing up. I have never shot burgers through it, but this ain't a burger group. This is just crap. Did another one, it's even crapper. Did another one, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not documenting this. I don't know where the double is. Doesn't matter to me. Right here, I decided number four group. I am done with 3600, 46 grains. Number four at 46 grains. I didn't even shoot these over the chronograph. I didn't feel like it. I didn't. Well, I have the lab radar hung up in the window permanently, but since my 50 fart, which is still ongoing. I've had it set to another setting and they're just such a nasty little piece of crap that I don't really like dealing with it anyway. So when I've been shooting, I've been using a crony. So I decided, well, I'm going to drop to three shot groups. I'm not I'm going to quit sizing. Because one of the things that I found is from sizing, these heads came loose. Remember. I'm a fat butt chamber guy, have been for 20 years, so all of my chambers are huge at the back. These start out at 466. They blow out to almost 477. They blow out to 476.5 pretty consistently. And when I start sizing them, even though my dies are sized scrupulously, these heads start to spin on here. I have not yet found a leaker. There are no marks in my chamber. There's nothing to indicate that it is leaking. But when these start to spin, and they're opened up 10 thou because of my fat chamber, they're gonna leak around here. I don't have a lot of firings on this. This is one case, which I set aside. I don't remember. No, nope, it's not that one. I'm going to screw it up and taken that one case and subsumed it. In fact, I think I did. I had a case sitting down here and I thought, what? No wear on it. I threw it in. So, I made a mistake. I lost my one case. Then I grabbed six cases and I went at it. One of these is my sixth case. I did blow the neck off of one because I turned it in too far with my cobby going by eye. Anyway, anybody who's ever built cases the way these were built knows what happened there. I just ran a little too far into the shoulder with my feather cut. <laughs> because it took me seven or eight dies, ten dies to get to that point. That was not a good shoulder to be cutting into. Anyway, minor. Don't care. Um, so I grabbed three of those cases and I decided to finish this out. Dropped to 45, shot this, dropped to 44, shot this, dropped to 43, shot this, dropped to 42, shot this. By now I'm down to within 150 feet per second of my regular cases. That's when the light went ding, 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 go away, do something else. You know, I, I could uh, go up off the coast and catch sea lions and have more fun than this. Um, I found what I needed and so far my thoughts have led me to think that maybe the problem is my fat butted chambers. When these things pop open, 
10 thou, that joint breaks loose. So as we sit here, unless I come up with a wild hair brained brainstorm, I see nothing useful. I could spend weeks, I have in the past for most of my life, spent a long time saying, Mm, 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 mm. I could fix that. No, I don't believe this is fixable. I think this is the end of the 6x47 experiment done with 277 SIG Fury cases. I just think it's done. So, these last I don't think I sized that one, but it doesn't matter because these groups are all the same. They're blind hogs and acorns. They're crap. So is this, so is this, so is this. These would have been the same size. Even though I'm dropping powder charge, and I could convince myself that it's shooting a wee bit better, but I'd be lying. Um, it might be shooting a wee bit better, but that's not the point. If this case doesn't blow doors on what I have. I have a competitive gun with normal cases at around 3150 um, to 3250 if I want to be hard on the cases. Perfect conditions when the weather is really spotless. I feel it shoots better at 3250. It just doesn't quite, I mean it runs there but it only runs there on a good day. When it's going from rain to sun to rain to sun and might get a little water in the chamber or whatever, a wet case, every now and again I'll, I've never pop, I don't pop primers with it because it's a good action, but on the one that I've been shooting competitively. I've actually got so many barrels and three different actions set up for this thing. They all shoot, I know what the gun shoots like. And it isn't anything like this. It shoots good. It shoots good enough to shoot the center pins out of the spotter, the markers. Um, it's exciting to shoot. It's fun. This is boring. This is like shooting a factory. Who knows what. I'm not going to pick on anybody as being lesser or worser. You know, we all kind of know that Savage and Ticka and Remington and more and more I'm hearing, you know, I'm playing with Weatherby. And they're all contenders out there, but they shoot better than this. This is just non-useful. And all I did was cut my losses by choosing a couple of directions. And when I haired down on to different, quit sizing, that's one direction. Um, started dropping charge weight. I dropped a full grain each time. And this is just because I had this, I went up here and I shot this, and then because of the way my paper was configured, I decided to come down here and start shooting across. First thing that happened, you'll notice that these two are pretty close together. And they about, I had to double my clicks. These are twice as far apart, twice as far apart, twice as, this is all stuff that you're going to recognize. I'm not used to moving my scope that far. I about ran out of pinders. Um, but anyway, this was the first group I fired for effect. And it was terrible. It was not making me happy. It already was making me think, hmm, 3600 might be a little too hot. But that's where, to make this case useful, all the work that goes into it and all the money. Uh, if I can't jump it from oozing along at 3150 to 3250, bring it up to 3600, the whole experiment is useless. Now part of it might be because of the 80,000th diameter flash hole. Part of it might be because I shot these loose and so they were vibrating and rattling and banging around in there. But I stopped shooting them loose here. These are all tight. Now, are they square? I don't know. Are they? No, I don't know. But here's the real problem. I don't care. I'm not going to fight this. I'm not going to push it down. Uh, I'll sleep on it. I'll think about it. I might build a set of cases for the 6.5 Creedmoor. But about that time I realized I've got this custom Lilja here. 
that I bought only because I was ordering Lilja's. I was ordering for another project and I threw one on there for myself and uh, I've got some ultra lightweight stocks. I'm going to build myself an ultra lightweight and one of the things that scared me a little is it's designed for big 270 bullets. The case was the 270 Hellbringer. It was going to buck like a monster. Well the Sig Fury experiment started and after saying repeatedly I'll never build a 27 caliber piece of blah blah I realized this is like the perfect barrel. Now in case some of you have been wondering why it looks so funky here it's because that's an inch 350 shank. This goes back to my earlier experiments with nutting with the size of this bearing surface here and I thought to myself this is a great barrel for testing my suppositions on barrel joint movement, 100,000 PSI case. This barrel is full action diameter. Going to get a good budding joint and I can play with, I'll probably just set it at 150 and call it good. There are some new Burger 277s. They're claiming their J4 jackets are coming. And after all these years of saying 27, plus we have another known paradigm that I work with a lot. I have thousands of 27 caliber lathe turned solids, Barnes TTSXs, and they are honest across the lines. They're all quarter minute bullets. Um, if I have to use barns and shoot groups this size, I won't be despondent because I'll be able to use this little bitty case in a short action in an ultralight mountain rifle to match a 270. The Fury case might come on in the next few years, it might not, but I might be feet on the ground with a gun belt if it does, if the military contract is accepted. I just have kind of talked myself into it because I believe in making lemons out of lemonade. And uh, believe me, this here is lemonade. No, the phrase of course is make lemonade when life gives you lemons. Well, God, life gave me lemons here. Um, not because of anything, it's just that the, the case made the velocity. I was so excited. When these came out, I went boop, 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 boop. All the way up to way out of that. I mean, 350 feet per second out of the envelope. And uh, these last three were sitting pretty clean for two of one and another one, a full grain of powder different. There's like 45, 46, 46 in there or something. I don't remember how I did it. I've got it written down. Maybe it was at half grains when I was up there. I don't remember, but I know that uh, I think two of these are the same and one of these is a little different. I'm not going to elaborate because there's nothing to tell you. Believe me, if it was successful and it showed clumps or sine waves or ladders or hootenannies of any sort, I'd be all, hey, look at this the way I... Nah, none of that. There's nothing to interpret there. This is just crap. Now, through this section, I didn't realize that the cases were getting the loosened heads. And uh, the ES was going wild. I shot like four groups with the Karate on. Another little rain shower came in and I put it away because I just didn't want to deal with it. And this stupid Labrador ain't working. So, bottom line is, warts, feathers and all. There's every bullet hole this thing ever made. And frankly... There's nothing I'd want to look at twice. This is going in the garbage. I don't need to save that. These are going away on file. Luckily, I have enough of these left to make cases for another project if I decide to make an interim project. But what this taught me is, if it's not going to make the 6x47 Lapua into a Wonderkind, it's also not going to... I'm not going to go through the, the case work to build another fairly well-known quantity to me, which is the 6.5 Creedmoor. So, I don't think the Creedmoor will ever get done. 
I think I'm going to shoot straight to the 277 Sig Fury in an 8 inch twist and Burger's new bullets and an ultra lightweight Macmillan. And I just dreamed up a whole new use, a whole new project, a whole new. So now I'm going to have to go call around and find a short action. I don't do many short actions. But I'll be able to come up with something. I'll make this sucker work. And uh, we'd be just using this little bitty case to push the biggest 277 bullet that has ever been booted. And I'm not going to waste any more of your time testing this in the known platform of my 6x47 Lapua. There's more I could tell you. I could, you know, tell you what I felt and tell you what I saw and tell you what I this and tell you what I that. But the bottom line is... There ain't a whole lot to tell you except that I consider the 6x47 Lapua built or uh, was using 277 SIG Fury cases for whatever reason, whether it's the junk or the, the sloppy case head or the huge 80 thousandths diameter flash hole, uh, doesn't matter to me. I might take it up later sometime. I'll learn something. I'll get another lease on life. Maybe I'll go back and fire these cases again. They're not going anywhere. But for right now, I'm going to go in and design a reamer tonight for the 277 Sig Fury. And then call around to all the makers I know and say, Hey, you got anything out there on the ground? And waiting for the new case to come out? Because I have a hunch it might not. Perusing the internet, I find a lot of crap about that. Don't you dare shoot this gun unless you have a custom-built action with a big stamp that says approved. Only shoot this on this. Well, I'll never build a gun on that stupid SIG frame. Um, so, I don't agree with any of that garbage. I don't think this thing makes stresses the action as much as, say... I will use actions and tenions and bolt lugs that are approved maybe for the Lapua case or for the WSM short mags, but the dirty little secret is they're the same thing. I don't think this stresses the action anything like a WSM running 65 plus thousand and definitely doesn't stress them like a 308 Norma or the big Lapua cases like 338 Lapua. So I think we're good on that score, but I might take off down a totally new rabbit trail next time we come on. But for tonight, I am indisposed to continue on wasting my life with this setup. So I won't.